Okay, good to see you tonight, and <clears throat> we're glad uh, we've got Facebook in with us too this evening. Deuteronomy chapter 10, continuing on from this morning, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, that's the first five books of the Bible called the books of law. So we're looking here, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, chapter 10, Um, where did I quit this morning? Anybody remember? Uh, it's verse 19. Let me therefore the stranger, for he was strangers of the land of Israel. Verse 19, 10, 19. I yes. thought it was the 22nd. Hmm? I thought you stopped at the, the 22. No, he ended at Boone and Randy. Oh, yeah, the strangers. Yeah, that's where we were. Okay. Mm-hmm. Of course, just reviewing here, <clears throat> we we came from Micah chapter 6, verse 8, and uh, it was quoted from Deuteronomy here. It was a blessing, and God uses repetition often. The, the more repetitious God is, it means it's more important. He hasn't forgot what he said. He, has, he, he doesn't, he repeats himself on purpose, perfectly. He didn't forget anything. He's having... There are certain that are complete chapters that are rewritten uh, in the Bible uh, from from uh, Psalms to Samuel. And uh, there are many uh, repetitions in the Bible. So let's pick it up at verse 22. We were talking about uh, this. Of course, the book of Deuteronomy is the second law. It repeats the things from the earlier journey being uh, delivered out of uh, Egypt. Verse 22, the fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for a multitude. Oh, they had made the stars. Now, I, I finished this chapter, actually. Yeah. We finished chapter 10 this morning. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Where do I want to go from there? Put the window on that. Man, this dude around me is so good. Here, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do here, 12. Find a verse I'm gonna mm, I'll find it here in a minute. Verse 12. Okay, let's go back to verse 12. <clears throat> now, the uh, the short version of 12 and 13 uh, was in Micah, chapter 6, 8. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Now, I'm being repetitious here, too, because God's repetitious. I'm repetitious. Uh, requirements of God. You need requirements. They drop the requirements a lot in many agencies. Um, 
I wanted to be a cop when I was young. And in, in Detroit, where I lived when I was young, you had to be five foot ten to be a cop. And, uh, I mean, I was physically fit and everything, and I was a football player and weightlifter, and, and I was very physically able to be a cop, but I was a half inch short. And uh, I went in there, and I tried to stand on my tiptoes, but where they measure you, they got a thing. If you take your heels off the ground, it goes, eh, makes a noise like that. <laughs> Someone told me, well, lay down for several hours before you go and you'll be taller. That didn't work. You had to be, I don't know. I wasn't going to go on no stretching machine. I wasn't going to go that route. If, if you wanted to be on a state trooper or some of the suburbs, you had to be six foot. There's requirements. Now you can be four foot five and be a woman and weigh 89 pounds. Man, I want that big old cop come and help me. About six foot two, about 230, big old muscles and everything. I don't want no little, little old woman cop come and help me. She liable to shoot herself in the foot and shoot me too. <laughs> you say, you don't have any faith in women cops? Not in your life. Give me a big old burly man. Give me a big old burly man soldier. Uh, Gregory was a Marine Corps. Did they have any, they have any women in the Marine Corps? Do you have any basic training with you there, Gregory? They were separate. I mean, could they go fight or they just like to be nurses' aides or something? Wouldn't they? No. No. Now they're throwing them in everything. It's not, it's not fair to women. I don't care. Do you say, uh, aren't women equal? Well, sure they're equal as far as going to heaven or with the law and all that, but uh, they shouldn't be doing some of the things men should be doing. I'm just telling you, I know. Huh? I ain't seen a woman on the garbage truck here. I have. Have you? I have a, Did you? I have a well, six, a well, there might be. Uh, uh, and there's some of them. There, there's some big. I mean, there are some. <clears throat> there are some big old girls that could beat me arm wrestling and probably beat me up too, but they're few and far between. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my Lord. Verse 12. And now Israel, <clears throat> what hath the Lord thy God required of thee? So requirements to get in the police department, that well, it, uh, you know what they did because they call this equal opportunity. Let's just finish out on this uh, woman's doing men's work thing. When I was in Milwaukee, uh, they were told by the federal government that they were going to hire firefighters that were women. And they gave him a quota. And so, I mean, you know, that's not, well, that sounds nice and everything. But the problem is, <clears throat> they couldn't find no women to qualify. A couple, but not many. Because what you had to do, you had to carry a, a, a great big uh, uh, sack of sand down a ladder. Are you going to rescue somebody? And uh, the women couldn't do it because they just weren't physically able to do it. So what did they do? Lowered the standards. Women didn't have to carry a big old fat guy like me down the ladder. Well, I'm in trouble then, amen? <laughs> I want some big dude could throw me on his shoulder and take me down that ladder quickly. <laughs> Not get me on the ladder and we'll all both fall down and kill ourselves. <laughs> requirements. God has requirements for Christians and they've never they've, they've never they never got to be less. Never got to be less. Requirements. The Bible's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
requirements for a born-again Christian as far as separation and godliness and living the way they're supposed to is the same today as it's ever been. The Bible never changes. God require of thee. But to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, you understand. If you don't fear God, you're nowhere. You better fear God because he can take his thumb and squash you like an ant any time he wants. Yeah. People shake their fist at God and curse God and and say, I'm, I, to some idiots that even stand in a, a podium like I am here, some of these atheists down through the years. They, I think his name was Ingersoll. He was an atheist back in the 50s, I think. And, and he said, if there's a God, <clears throat> there is no God. If you are God, strike me dead right now. That's what he'd say. And there he was. He still said, see, there ain't no God. Oh, yeah, you're going to burn in hell one day. He, he Ingersoll's in hell burning now. Atheist, God-hater. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, uh, he'd have wished he'd never stood in the, uh, at the podium and uttered those ridiculous, he's a fool. And he's burning in hell right now and regretting what he said. Fear the Lord thy God. To walk in all his ways. What does that mean? Everybody got any thought? What does it mean? To do the will of God. What God has set you out. Uh, where do you find his will? In his word. In his word. You have to. His word. That's a, that's a deal. His word. That's what I'm trying to get you. Read his word. Read his word. I read it in the morning. I read it at noon. I go in my car. I don't. I I don't. I, 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 I listen to basically... Uh, uh, most of the time in my car even, I listen to the Word of God. Uh, I've got a, a thing on there in my new van, and it's not my van, it's the mission's van. But I listen to the, the Bible, I read the Bible, I study the Bible. It says, uh, walk in all uh, His ways and love Him. Another portion of Scripture says, uh, if ye love me, keep my commandments. That's what it's talking about here when it says, walk in all his ways. You see, you keep saying the same things, Pastor Varg. I've been coming around here for 10 years. You keep saying the same things. That's because God says the same thing over and over and over through the Bible. You know why I have to tell it to you over and over, Facebook and, and here in church and wherever I go? Because you don't get it. You don't get it. Yeah, you don't get it. Walk in all his ways to love him and to serve the Lord thy God. You see, if, if you love God, you serve him. If you love his word and you want to and you fear him, you serve him. You be a servant. You're not running away from work in a church, you're going to the work. You want to do all you can. What more can I do? My dear Doris, ninety four years old, she'll be here in the morning again. I need her in the morning. Greg's got another appointment in the morning. I need her for kitchen. And I says, Doris, I need you. Oh, she'll come in and tell me I need her. 94 years old. Right on the front line. And you know what she tells me all the time? Pastor, I just don't do enough for God. I wish I could do more for God. She busy for God all the time. Yeah. Well, how you doing? What you done for God lately? Huh? What What have you done? What have you done out there, Facebook? What have you done for God? Serve Him. Serve Him. Serve the Lord thy God. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. I mean, that's your whole being. All of you, all of you serving God. Wow. Verse 13. Again, it's getting back to the same old story. You see, the same thing. I say the same thing over and over because the Bible says the same thing over and over. To keep his commandments of the Lord and his statutes. Now, what happened? We read, we talked about it extensively this morning for you that were not here this morning. I think everybody here tonight was here this morning. But maybe someone out on Facebook wasn't uh, wasn't listening in this morning. But 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 we talked about uh, how uh, Moses had got the Ten Commandments from the Lord. Remember, he brought them down from the mount. 
And uh, uh, he heard the, uh, I'll just be a little repetitious on this. I won't go into as much as I did this morning, but uh, uh, he heard the crazy rock music. And he got down there and the folks was naked. And, and it was dancing around that golden cow. And my friend Nathan, he got upset this morning because uh, uh, because he, he just didn't know the Bible story. He thought he did, but he didn't. And uh, God took that, uh, Moses took, God told Moses to take that golden cow and grind it up in the powder, put it in the water, make them drink it. <laughs> you see, God does stuff, yeah, he does stuff like that. He liable to beat the tar out of you and me too. You don't behave yourself. <laughs> yeah. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, to keep thy commandments to the Lord and his statutes. Now, uh, he came down with the Ten Commandments. He got so mad, he busted them. He had to go back up there. <laughs> After he ground up that gold, made him drink it. Brought, brought, brought them back again. Same commandments. Exactly. Word for word. Uh, I didn't think I said this this morning, but I believe in word for word inspiration. I believe God goes further than the word for word. Every jot and tittle, the Bible says. That's the, the, the punctuation marks. It's all. It's been settled in heaven forever. Don't you dare try to change the Word of God. They've been trying to change it ever since it's been published and given to us. So he brought the commandments back. And remember what I said this morning? He killed Aaron. Uh, Aaron didn't get a chance to do nothing. Eleazar took over. Why did he kill Aaron? Because he was supposed to take over when the man of God went up the hill to get the commandments, and 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 he and he uh, got him into the worship, dirty, filthy cow worship, golden cow. And so he, I, I don't want to. Uh, I know Christians. I could name you a bunch of Christ, uh, pastors that I know personally had over the years that are dead now. They were no use to God anymore. They messed up. What did he do? Whoosh, took them out of the way. You say he killed them? Yeah, he killed them. They died suddenly? Yeah. What would God do? Because being a pastor is a big job. Being a leader, being a Christian is a big job. You don't even have to be a pastor. He might kill you too. Yeah. Because you don't honor him, don't love him, won't obey the commandments. In your face, God. Live in your wickedness. <clears throat> you know, God kept giving his people. He was merciful. He didn't bring judgment on them. He was merciful. Remember, he delivered him out of Egypt. What what a wonderful deliverance that was. You need to go back and read that in in uh, Genesis and then in Exodus when they were out in the, in the, uh, wandering around in the wilderness. What a, what a story. What a story of deliverance and mercy and parting of the Red Sea and killing of the, the Pharaoh and his great army and, and all of that and how they continued to disobey him. Because he would not, they would not listen to him. Which I commanded thee this day for thy good. Verse 14, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's. Amen. And thy God, the earth also, with all that therein is. Only the Lord hath a delight in thy fathers to love him. Yes, delight in thy father to love him. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people. Why did he choose Jews? I don't know, but he chose Jews. 
Jesus uh, was in the lineage of, of Jews. That's the way he was. Are they a special nation? Have they been all this time? Yes, they have. I don't know why. God can do whatever he wants. Don't be jealous. Don't, uh, don't, don't say, well, 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 why didn't he change that? I have Hungarian origin. Why didn't he choose Hungarian? I don't know. He chose Jews. He do whatever he wants, actually. And he does do what he wants. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. Again, we talked about that this morning. Get your heart right. If you live in sin, your heart's not right. And be not stiff-necked, proud, arrogant. For the Lord your God is God of gods, Lord of lords, a great God, and mighty and terrible, and regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. You can't buy off God. I mentioned that this morning. And he doesn't respect persons. He doesn't think any more. He's no respect of persons. He don't. We 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 have a problem. Sometimes we respect people because of what they got money. A lot of times we respect people because they got money, and why we want them to give us some advantage or give us some money or something. You know what I'm talking about? That's true. Uh, God doesn't. God doesn't respect money because He's in charge of all the money. <laughs> he can cause a person to go broke just as quick as they got that money or quicker. It could take them 50 years to get the money, and they can lose it in a minute. God wiped wipe them out completely. Times they do. Remember when the stock market crashed? And people lost all they had because there was one in the stock worth a nickel. And uh, they were diving out the windows on Wall Street. Remember that in New York? They're diving out the windows. I don't know. It was before my time. It was in the 1930s. That, that great stock crash. I'll tell you, it happened again. Since President Trump has been elected... We've had a tremendous growth in the stock market. I mean, it's like boom, 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 and a lot of money. And uh, that, and a lot of things have gone forward and all that. Like I mentioned this morning, talking about this humility, Donald Trump is not a humble man. I voted for him. I'm glad for a lot of things that he does. I got a low battery. I didn't change it before. I didn't charge it before I came. Um. Donald Trump, uh, he's a proud and arrogant man. I don't think he's saved. I don't care what these TV evangelists said. I got heard three or four of the TV evangelists. Oh, I led Donald Trump to the Christ. I doubt it. Got to be humbled before he can be saved. I like a lot of things he's doing. But I wish he'd get rid of his foolish pride and trust in God. Amen. Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. If my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. If, if America stays as wicked and sinful and we keep killing over a million babies every year, abortion, we're marrying queers now, Preachers like me, old-time preachers like me, to tell the truth, they, they say we're the wrong ones. Queers are right and preachers are wrong. America's in trouble, friend. I'm going to tell you that. Watch out. Watch out. Yeah. God of God, Lord of Lords, the great God, mighty and terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow. He helped. Uh, uh, God likes uh, uh, fatherless children. And he likes widows, and he helps us. He helps the poor. I've been glad my ministry has totally, over the years, been dedicated to poor people, homeless people and poor people. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm all about. You know why I do it? I feel that's what Jesus cares about. That's why I care about it. I care for what Jesus cares about. Praise God. then we close it out and loving the stranger let's get back to that wonderful verse Micah 6 8 
my battery's about gone. My fault I didn't charge it. This this video stuff put down the internet takes a lot better. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Joe, and Micah. And he has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require here, this requirement of God again. This is actually taken from Deuteronomy chapter 10. Repet remember, repetition God gives us. But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. And there's where we get it again. Walk humbly with thy God. <clears throat> Don't ever get... The don't ever get tired of the word humility. Humility is the key. Jesus was the humble, lowly servant. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yeah. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's a meek and humble servant, and yet if we, hum, uh, if we hook up with him, uh, uh, he'll do the heavy pulling. And we just be carried along, amen? Who was it? it? Was Is she here tonight? Let me see. I don't think she is. What's she telling me this morning? Maybe she is here. Oh, yeah. Will you tell me this morning about how the Lord was beat? You get whooped up by some things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do all the time. I'm talking about the girl behind you. Oh. <laughs> Did you tell me something about that this morning? Come up on platform and tell me that? Yeah. Oh, she's a little bash. I'm sorry. I didn't want to bring it up. It seems like. I mean, you ain't, you ain't no different, buddy. Devil whipping up on everybody in here. How many of the devil been whipping up on you, too, huh? <laughs> They'll be whipping up on everybody. You know, listen, sister, don't worry about it. They'll be whipping, whipped up on me, too. But I'll tell you why. It's because, and listen to this, we try to live by resolution. You can't resolve to do right. You'll always fail. How did I get saved? By faith. I trusted Christ. I got saved. How do I win over sin? How many of you got sin in your life? How, how many of you got a, a sin or certain sins that really seem to kick you in the teeth all the time and you, you just can't get over that, you know? You see, the problem is this. You're trying to beat it by quitting it, by resolution, when you, you, you have to give it to God by faith just like your salvation. Amen? Amen. By faith, it's yours, God. You're all-powerful. Let it not have the victory over me anymore. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Can you pray that with me tonight? Let it not have the victory over me. God can do it. Did He save you? If you're saved, you're the only one that could have saved you. Did He do it because of faith? Yes. Did you have anything to do with it? No, just accept the gift, amen? amen. And why don't you just accept the gift by faith of victory over certain sin? Let's think of a certain sin. I'm thinking one. It's mine. You say, well, what is it, Pastor? Ain't none of your business. By the way, don't go telling your sin all around here. Problem is, a lot of people don't have to tell it around. You can see it. They stagger around drunk and this, that, and the other thing. I mean, you know, <laughs> no one has to tell you. I mean, it's visible. Amen. <laughs> Did you get your hands on one a sin that to keep come back and whooping you? Any you got that? I got mine. You got yours? You say again, tell me, Pastor, what's yours? None of your business. <laughs> don't tell me yours either, I don't care. I can see some of them. I can see some of them. 
But now listen. Can we this evening by faith let God take that away from us? Now there's there's plenty of sins in my life I've gotten rid of. Listen, by faith, by faith. Not by Benny Hinn's faith. Not by God's faith. No, not by, not by God's faith. Not by Benny Hinn's faith faith, not by Oral Roberts' faith, not by Billy Graham's faith, my faith, your faith, you and I, Ray, you've got to exercise that faith, yeah, Wayne, it's got to be you, Ruth's got to be you, on and on, everybody here, it's got to be you, it's got to be me. We've got to exercise that faith that God will take it. And when we, when we by faith give it to Him, you know what? It's gone. I, listen. Listen to this. I did, yeah, well, don't pick it back up. I, I, I did that with alcohol. I did that when I was saved. You know what? I've been saved uh, for uh, 48 years and eight or nine months. I never had a drop of alcohol. I did it. I, I give it to God. I give my cigarettes to God by faith. Same time before I got, just right there when I was getting saved. I ain't had one cigarette all these years. You know what? I don't miss the alcohol. I don't miss the cigarettes. It's not a battle. I have no problem with it at all. You say, well, you got to fight it out. I don't fight nothing. I, I gave that to God by faith when I got saved. You know what? Ain't been bothered. Now, some other things that I haven't given to God by faith still affect me, like the things that affect you. You understand? I've got to, I've got to rid of a lot of garbage and, and sin in my life by faith. I hope you have too. Some of you out there in Facebook and some even uh, come. Boy, we had a good crowd in church there. We got a good crowd for a midweek service tonight. Uh, a lot of people, they just uh, they just not going to give things up. They, they, they just not. You're not going to have any victory because you you don't want victory. You know why? You love your sin. Uh huh. The reason you and I don't give up that set besetting sin that we have. And, and let God take it by faith and get rid of it because we love it. Huh? And we just go after that thing. We'll go after that thing. We don't have to. Oh, praise God. Humble yourself. Don't resolve to quit sinning by faith. Give it to God and He'll take care of it. He's done it for a whole bunch of stuff in my life. Maybe. Maybe church member, maybe Facebook friend. Maybe the reason you can't get rid of any sin in your life because you don't have a heavenly father. You're not saved. I don't know. Only one in this auditorium right now that I know that's saved for sure is me. I don't know for sure anybody's saved but me. We're going to be shocked when we get to heaven of people we think that should be there, there in hell. And on the other hand, we'll be, there'll be quite a few too we think that aren't saved, that are saved. They're just backsliders. I don't know. I won't worry about me. I'm going to be right with God. You better get right with God about this salvation thing because if you're not right with God, you're going to go to hell about salvation. And then if you don't live for God, follow Him and trust Him. Moment by moment, your life will be all wood, hay, and stubble. It'll burn up and you'll have no rewards in heaven. If you serve God and win souls and do those things pleasing to God, you'll have gold, silver, and precious stones. Amen? It won't be a judgment seat for believers. A white throne judgment for lost people, not what their punishment will be in hell. The judgment seat of Christ, the beam of seat of Christ, will be for we that are true believers. And what our rewards will be in heaven will be judged there. 
Bob Badger is going to quit here in a second. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these. Bless my Facebook watchers now. Bless these precious ones. A good crowd for midweek service. Praise God. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Church, you see, I'm saved and I know it. Slip your hand up. I'm saved and I know it. God bless you. and Put your hands down. Anybody in church tonight, you say, I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you slip your hand up? Anybody at all? Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Amen. I have the Father. You've seen the hands. You know who's saved out on Facebook. You in church here that don't know you're saved. God's speaking to your heart. That's why you raise your hand. You out there in Facebook, you know if you're saved or not. Watch play the sinner's prayer. Get born again today. This is a prayer. If you want to get saved and you mean it. You're willing to repent. Humble yourself for the mighty hand of God. Get saved tonight. Pray this sinner's prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross. Rose to the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. You say, Pastor, you're in church here tonight. You say, Pastor, I wasn't sure I was saved, but I prayed that prayer with you, and I asked Jesus to save me in that. Now, minute, would you slip your hand up? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How about out there on Facebook? I can't see your hand, but have you done it out on Facebook today? I hope so. God bless you, dear one. Thank you, dear Lord, for these that have been saved in church tonight. Thank you, dear Lord, for those out on Facebook. I don't know who, who they are, but let us know. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for this second law, Deuteronomy, that repeats the truths of previous chapters of deliverance and the mercy of God on the children of God. Thank you, dear Lord, for it. We've had a good day. Been a number of people saved. It's been good. We've had good crowds. Thank you, Lord. Give us good, nice rest. Help us to be a testimony for you when we leave this building. Give us good, nice rest so we can serve you tomorrow. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good night, Facebook. Ship this to someone. Be hit. Send it to one of your friends. Talk to you tomorrow.